So also, probably like moving on from that, how about um, a little bit of explanation of the type of services we offer here at Monroe? Very diverse. Yes. Right, that um, a lot of people uh, have uh, mm -hmm. bring us uh, a variety of, they need help, yep. right? So yep. maybe you want to touch on that for a minute or two. You are right, Mike. They And you, as a guy in sales, you probably are better equipped to answer this yeah. in, in more <laughs> depth, but... Um, you know, it's interesting when we first started out in the company and we had Sandy and, and these few individuals would go out and they would they would do these wholesale product, you know, yeah. evolution, revolutionary changes. Right? right. And so that's I think it's interesting because, you know, in the world of new product development or new product development support, that's a big topic to talk about. But that's kind of what we do on, yeah. on, a, on a regular basis. And, in, and within that, it's from, you're right, from concept to, to understanding what the, the customer requirements are and all the way to, to plant facilitation. So we can do it all. Right. But you're right. Our customers come with anything along that range. So, yeah, under the theme of that, we do benchmarking. Everyone knows that. You see it on Monroe Live all the time. So, we, you know, we do benchmarking our own internal as well as for our client base. Right. But most of the time, right, we don't do benchmarking just for the fun of it, right? There's something to be gained, and our customers want to know what is the competition doing. So we walk through that that benchmarking analysis to gain that data and, and exactly what is the competition doing? How are they different? Where do they excel? And that's where we do our design profit analysis. Mm -hmm. But that really falls into um, – the area of product optimization. That's what we do a lot of, right? Those right. VVA things, looking for cost and weight reduction opportunities and doing those workshops with our clients to see how they can overcome some of their deficiencies, right? right. And then bringing our lean design methodology in there that brings costing to the forefront. We want to talk in objective language, mm -hmm. right? Design Profit gives you those metrics along with cost data so we know we have some very good metrics for clear decision making. Right. So we have that benchmarking. We do our design optimization. We do costing. And all those can fall under that big umbrella of product development support. Yeah. So that a lot of people do know us as benchmarking, but we are so much more than that. Yeah, and I like how you mentioned collaboratively. Correct. With our customers, right? They don't just send us work and we no. analyze and yeah. send it back. Right? No, that you're right. We do that to start with. Right. But then, then we want to work with their engineers. So kind of like what we experienced at right. GM. Now, when they go back and they, they look at a design, they're seeing it differently. Right. From, I, from I, right. this process. I think that's really important because I can, I can work in isolation from my client, but I think they will accept the answer if they're part of the solution yeah. as well. And I think that if they if they can see reasonably how we got there and and understand the nuance of a new technology or where we've seen it before, I think it, it eliminates the risk. I'm not saying eliminates. Reduces. It minimizes, yeah. right, the risk yeah. for them because I think they realize that other people have done it. This isn't that scary. And, oh, by the way, the numbers are saying it, it's going to work. And I think they can get behind those ideas. And I think our – our success of implementation is higher. Yeah, more, I think you've more seen likely that. to follow through with right. it. Right. And it probably makes sense that there's, you know, thinking of our process that we've repeated over and over, same basic process right. for all our customers. Right. You might have one or two success stories that come to mind. Um, anything you want to share with uh, the listeners? So maybe, maybe our listeners have seen these before because I think Sandy has spoken to them, but I, I still say one of our, and I don't even know if you were, I think you were here for Club Car, right? Were you yeah. here? Yeah. I mean, honestly, it's it is. different, different yeah. people. I wasn't yeah. on the project. Right. But, but I think it, it really kind of demonstrates that the totality of what we can provide and, and, and demonstrates the, the extreme, almost amazing transformation that can happen in product design when it's done right the first time, which Sandy's really all about yeah. that, getting in on the concept stage in this collaborative environment with the team yeah. all together in one place and without interruption, sort of isolated. So Club Car, I think, really demonstrates that totality of new product development and brings our collaboration of all of the tools, the yeah. collection of all of our tools with collaboration with the client. So if you remember... 
club car tip to tail analysis, right? Starting at the concept stage, clean sheet kind of thing, yeah. working with their people, trying to get focus groups, understanding exactly what do what does what does your customer really want? And not just like the person who's gonna drive the golf car, but what about the lawn maintenance people? What about yeah. the people who have to fix these things? We got remember that? Yeah. We got all the input from the focus groups, developing the styling concepts, and then doing our design profit analysis on yeah. those vehicles as well as the competitive set, doing the best of benchmark, the best of best, and then trying to get better than the best of best. Right. And working collaboratively with those workshops, developing all these new concepts that didn't exist at that yeah. time in a golf cart yeah. at all. That new frame structure and that new suspension system, the uh, the Surlon coating on the panels for scuff resistance, come up with these ton of patents on the monsoon roof. Right. I mean, it was an amazing story. Yeah, yeah. And if I remember right, they initially reached out to us thinking they just needed some help benchmarking. <laughs> Right, yeah. they they're planning yeah. on doing a new vehicle, yeah. Yeah. and maybe could we get some benchmarking help? And then after a couple of conversations with Sandy and the team, it's like, yeah, we need to really, yeah, we need to sign up for the whole service. Right, <laughs> and so you're right. We took that from concept all the way to the first yeah. 500 car build. Right? right, we helped them with the facilitation on the factory floor, setting specking equipment. We did yeah. like we we did help them do everything. Yeah. It was just amazing. And I don't think our team was very big, but we, we sure brought the expertise forward when we needed it. And I think the, the numbers, the results are telling unto themselves, right? We have reduction of parts by 60%. You can do that kind of stuff when it's a clean sheet. Yeah. Much harder to do when it's just a refresh, right? Yeah. But So you get that 60% parts reduction. What does that mean? 60% less suppliers, 60% less assembly operations, right? Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, you know, their floor space was reduced by 66%. You can see how the trend flows right down to the factory floor. And, uh, I mean, it's just a, an amazingly efficient design. The cost yeah. was... And then it flows uh, right it down just, into... It did. Profitability. Yeah, because they just captured the market share, right? They it, yeah. they captured the market share from 32 to, what, 80% of the market and, and, and came up with a lower manufacturing cost that allowed them to capitalize on huge profits. So it was a huge success story. And they're still the preferred choice of the three major yeah. competitors. Yeah. For so that was that yeah. was like one of the biggest ones because, I mean, we had a lot of patents on that. We did. Yeah. I mean, they had a lot of patents because yeah. that, right. that was amazing. So that, you know, that's one type of project. That, that sort of encompasses all of the tool sets that we can bring to bear. But then there's other work patterns, which I know you know about as well as when we work with some of our OEM clients and we do sort of this embedded support thing mm. where we come to your house and we help you with design optimization and re cost reduction. And so we become an extension of your team. Yeah. And then that's a true collaborative effort. And again, those are efforts that can glean anywhere from 40 to 100% return on your investment. Right. I mean, it's... Uh, uh, yeah, that's that's that's, uh, that's a good work pattern for us as well. Right. That's that's impressive how our our teams can take the data and distill it down to actionable ideas. Working with the home team, right. it's um, I'm I'm always impressed with our teams and and how they turn that over. So, I definitely think that the the re reoccurring theme is this collaborative effort that really makes the whole harmonizes the whole process, yeah. brings it all together, and really can can propel in uh, implementation success. I think that's a really big deal. But, you know, Mike, there are so many success stories. You know, we could, Sandy always said, from Barbie to the space station, yeah. you know, from buses to bombs, medical, aerospace. Um, it, 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 so many industries we have influenced and worked in, and that's kind of what makes our, our talent yeah. base really strong. Yeah, this and uh, in a half hour, I'm going to be talking to a customer about medical products. Right. So yes, it's uh, we're based in uh, in Metro Detroit, so a lot of automotive sure. and automotive related. But boy, we touch the principles everything. Principles apply oh, everywhere. Yeah, they can be applied to any any product. True. 